Hi everyone, it's Miko! I have some really exciting news to share with you guys. So this past week, oh my goodness, where do I even begin? I was able to generate, literally, I went from Monday, if you guys go back to seeing my Facebook Lives, Monday this week, I had a massive breakdown. Massive emotional breakdown, but I always say this, I always say that it's the biggest breakdowns lead to the biggest breakthrough, which absolutely happened to me this week. So by today, Saturday, I was able to generate, let's see, I was able to stood for three people to enroll into the vision, into the possibilities, and two of those being into a leadership training that I'm actually doing right now, which is like a high investment uh, to that program. So two people said yes. And then I also enrolled my first ever client. Oh my goodness. I'm so excited to be working with her. Um, and she paid in full. So like literally abundance is coming my way like an avalanche. Um, so those are the three wins that happened in the span of like the past 24 hours or 48 hours and I also opened the doors to more love like I am now connecting with this amazing guy um, I'll update you guys later but I also met him this week so and it's been going so well so far so we'll see um, and just experiencing this next level of joy that I've never felt for a while now. So I, I wanna go over with you guys what exactly did I do to open the gates to more abundance, more love, and more joy in literally a span of one week. So um, this was something, a training, if you guys haven't seen it, because I did it inside of a private Facebook group actually for my business coaching program um, that I am a part of. So I, I do want to give you guys some context before I go to the next page, which is, which is uh, more about what I did this week. But basically, this, this picture, it's a description of uh, my entire journey in entrepreneurship. So... Some of you guys know this, I started my entrepreneurship journey in 2018. Yeah, 2018, January. So it's been over two years now. So I started my entrepreneurship journey for two and a half years now. And let me tell you, it's been definitely been an uphill struggle just because, you know, there's so much I didn't know. There was so much growth that needed to happen in terms of myself, my transformation. So I went from, you know, doing network marketing, doing Forex trading to now doing coaching and building my own business. So along the way, you know, trying different vehicles, like different mentors, different coaching programs, different books, different seminars, different vehicles of success that I've tried like all kinds of different things, right? Like Forex, network marketing, coaching, like all of those things were different vehicles that I was using. Um, this is me, right? This is me trying to get to my destination. My destination obviously is to hit my first six figures, uh, create a business, right? Generate six figures by the end of this year and then like be massively successful, create massive impact and influence, healing the, the consciousness of humanity. Like that's where I want to be, like my destination. So in the past two and a half years, I've definitely tried all kinds of different vehicles to get me to point A to point B. But what I didn't realize was that this, this vehicle was only 5% of the game. Me, I was the one doing all of the driving. So it didn't matter how fancy I get, like what the vehicle is, if I drive a Mercedes or drive like a Ferrari, it didn't matter because I was the driver behind the wheel. So, you know, for two and a half years, this was me, sad Miko, in the grind, trying to make it happen. Um, so 5%, like I mentioned, it's a vehicle, right? So uh, 5%, I have a conscious declarations of where I want to be. Here's my destination. So 5% consciously, I know where I wanted to be. But it was op being driven by 95% of my subconscious programming that I wasn't aware of. This 95% of the subconscious programming was what's driving this vehicle. So what was underneath of this 95% was I was basically trying to build my business 
as the three-year-old Miko who was afraid of getting abandoned, who was afraid of getting, uh, feel the, the rejection or feel unloved. Like that was the Miko that was trying to make it out there, that was trying to be successful, that was trying to be, uh, create a six-figure multi-million dollar business. I was really operating from that standpoint where I, everything that I did really came down to how can I avoid the pain of feeling abandoned again? How can I avoid people rejecting me? How can I avoid the pain of not feeling loved? So that was what's driving the vehicle, 95% of me. So in that subconscious programming, what was running my life was that, you know, I was this abandoned, this hurting little girl. And just to give you guys some background context, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, um, when I was born, I have a twin sister. I wasn't raised by my mom up until the age two or three because she basically raised me, my twin and my older sister completely on her own. So she couldn't take care of all three of us. So she paid my auntie to raise me up until age two or three. Um, and obviously, at that time, as a little girl, I didn't know what was going on to me. My mom and my dad wasn't my parents. I remember running away from them when, whenever they visited me at my auntie's house. Um, and I have absolutely no memory of when I was officially returned back to my mom and my dad's care. So imagine that kind of trauma that I went through as a little girl, not knowing what was happening. Now I know, <laughs> now I'm super appreciative. Um, you know, I pretty much have two moms, right? So, uh, but in that moment, I pretty much started to tell myself this story that I wasn't good enough. I was abandoned by my mom two times, right? So like that was the story that was that has been running my life up until like literally last month. So 25 years of my life. And that was also what was driving me to build my business because everything that I did, it was coming from this need to feel loved by my mom like everything that I did, I need to be overachieving, I need to accomplish, I need to do the best that I can in everything that I did just so I can get love from my mom. So that was basically my whole life, right? And then it was a very taking energy. What would I mean by this? So taking just means that underneath of everything that I did up until, you know, the past month was that I was always subconsciously trying to take something from people, from the other person. I put something out there on Facebook. I was trying to, to take validation, love, acceptance, and the likes and the comments. I was trying to take something from people subconsciously because I didn't feel loved inside, right? So when we are in the taking energy, we cannot receive abundance. That's just the way it is. The more a the more we give, the more we can receive abundance. Just That's just the way the universe operates. So obviously for the longest time, like financial abundance was a struggle because I was constantly in that uh, taking energy, that needing something from people that I wasn't giving value. So that's why abundance wasn't in the picture. So, and then I also realized like what was playing underneath of this like 95% of what was driving me in everything that I did was that there was a terrible money story that I was telling myself my whole life, which was, so my dad was away in a different city. He wasn't at home at all up until like I was age seven or eight and he was working just, just so he can support the family, right? So imagine my idea of money growing up was that if I, if the family were to have money, then that means dad wouldn't be around. And that without that father figure, that masculine energy, I never felt safe. Like I just never felt safe. So even though consciously I really wanted the money, I wanted abundance, I wanted the six figures and multi-million dollars, like it didn't matter how much 5% of my conscious mind wanted that, but 95% of me was running away from money because I didn't want to feel unsafe. I didn't want to feel that lack of security because in me, I associated having money with not having my dad around. Does that make sense? So that was playing underneath of my subconscious programming. 
So obviously it makes sense. It didn't matter how much I declare I want the business, I want the success, I want the money, but 95% of me was literally running away from that. That's why I created a lot of the sabotaging tendencies. Like I would do something and somehow self-sabotage that so I wouldn't create the results that I consciously declare I wanted. So just giving you guys a, a little bit background context of where my life has been like up until pretty much up until last week, I would say, uh, because on Monday, that's when I realized all of these, it literally like, you know, was wide, like up in the service for me to realize and see what's been really running my entire life. And I broke down because I was getting exhausted. Like I knew that I don't want to live my life this way anymore, constantly overwhelming myself putting way too much on my plate just so i can achieve just so i can accomplish so i can get a sense of love for my mom like all of that was nonsense and i was done with it um so i completely pivoted and did completely totally different things so i want to share with you guys basically the before and after let me put this to the side really quickly um so this is literally before monday and this is after in these past couple of days. And then, so before I was in this lackful state of being. So what do I mean by this? So lackful state of being because I was constantly in the striving and in the doing. So if you're highly ambitious, if you've got big goals and big visions and big dreams, you're constantly in the doing and constantly in the striving because where you're at right now, here and now, it's not good enough. So that's why you need to go somewhere to get the money, to get the success, to get the clients. So you're always in the doing, always trying to get somewhere that you're not right now. And that's a really lackful state of being that you are presenting yourself. That's a lackful state, state of energy. So I was in that situation and I was always so future and outcome focused. So when I'm always thinking about the future, when I'm always thinking about my goal, when I'm always thinking about this multi-million dollar business that I want to create, then I am constantly, I'm constantly telling the universe that where I am at right now, it's not good enough. It's in lack, it's missing something, it's, uh, it's just not good enough. I need to be in this point B in order to feel happy, in order to feel good, in order to feel abundant. So again, that's really lackful state of being. And then I also realized that I had a massively abusive relationship with myself. And I am sure that highly ambitious people can absolutely relate to this. Because when you are extremely like you're, you're ambitious, there's always just not good enough. Like it didn't matter how much you create, how much success you're able to achieve. Somehow it's never enough, <laughs> right? Because we're so ambitious. We always want to get to the next level. So like for me, that was absolutely true for my whole life, right? It, I never knew how to celebrate my wins. And I always focus on the thing that wasn't working. And my self-love was conditional. It was conditional on whether or not I get my client, whether or not I get the money, whether or not I build a successful business. Like it was extremely conditional. I was literally uh, keeping self-love as hostage unless I achieve something, which is absolutely insane. Um, and my self-worth was also tied to my achievements, right? Can you guys relate to this? Like, you know, what, when I achieve this, then I'm good enough. When I, when I make this happen, then my self-worth is up there. Like it, it, it's insane. That was basically my whole life, right? My self-worth was tied to achievements. What I do was, uh, who I was, was what I did. Um, and then like whenever I took time to do self care, I literally would feel guilty because I somehow associated being constantly productive, constantly in the doing with equal results. Um, and that's something that society kind of conditioned us to, to believe in. Like you gotta work hard to generate results, but all of that is BS. Um, there's actually a beautiful balance between that. Um, and then, so that was abusive relationship with self. So my cup was literally like 5% full all the time. Think of about driving a car at 5% gas. Uh, it's never at a hundred percent. So, and then I also saw abundance only in the form of money. 
So if I didn't have a fat, juicy bank account, then I didn't feel abundant. If I if money was going out more than money was coming in, then I didn't feel abundant. And that again, it's a societal conditioning and programming to take you uh, away from knowing how magical, how abundant that you already are just by being you. So I was definitely in that trap. I definitely you know, saw abundance was directly related to money. So that's why I was constantly in lack, right? So, and then last but not least, just a week ago, I was extremely, ex extremely judgmental with myself, with other people, because this is like a trait for a lot of highly successful people, highly ambitious people, sorry. Um, because when we're super uber driven and ambitions, ambitious again going back to what i said earlier like where we're at it's never enough like it's never good enough we always want to do more we always want to be better we always want to have more um so like i was extremely judgmental towards myself like if i sucked at something i would beat myself up for it or and because the way I treat myself, it's exactly how I treat other people. The more judgmental I am with me, the more I'm judgmental with other people. So that's where I was at pretty much just Monday, prior to Monday. Um, and I did a massive pivot. So these are all of the things that I started doing and it literally opened the doors to so much abundance. Like I can't even, it, it's amazing how the universe literally uh mirrors back to you the more you shift who you are all of the outside situations become a mirror reflection so the it results so far has been instant just like that um so number one let me kind of put it closer if you guys can see i know it's backwards so <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna just say it out loud um so number one I completely slowed down the grind and I just played and I chilled out way more. Literally, I haven't worked that at all all week, like this past week, but somehow I've gotten results that I never had in the past two and a half years. Really hear what I just said. I didn't work pretty much like this whole week last week and I was able to create results that I never had for two and a half years in my entrepreneurship journey that's how powerful this is like i literally just slowed down i didn't work i played i i hung out at the beach so much this week and i just laid in the sand i listened to the ocean waves i just bask into the sunlight the sunshine and i just chilled the heck out <laughs> um the reason why this is powerful it's because when we are not needing to be somewhere that we are not uh, and when we are just content with where we are at, it's actually letting the universe know that I am absolutely, like I have everything that I need right here and right now, which leads me to the next point. I started being more in the now and right here and right now versus always in the doing. Like one of my mentor, Billy, he mentioned this all the time. Like we are human beings. We're not human doing. So uh like i really just literally connected to the now and it's been a game changer and then the third one that really shifted everything for me was cultivating a loving relationship with myself and where and where self-love is no longer conditional like i really started to love myself up regardless of what i was creating regardless of whether or not i showed up and did a workout like it was unconditional i really love myself up like regardless of what was happening um so basically like i was filling up my cup like i had my cup is a lot more full so that i can give out more so i can be in that giving energy versus the taking energy um and then self-care also became a non-negotiable thing for me um and this is thanks to my support of my coach my mentor steven he mentioned that um you know i got i get to reframe how i look at self-care i get to reframe how i uh approach time off he said that now from that point on you get to look at self-care and time off as a non-negotiable thing that the success of your business is literally contingent it's dependent upon whether or not i take time off so that totally blew my mind away because it makes total sense 
the audience that I'm serving, the clients that I'm serving, they do not want a version of Miko that's running at 5% full at a tank, right? 5% full in her gas tank. They want someone who is fully connected, who is loving, who is genuine, who is vibrant, like playing at her 100%. So if I were to not take time off to take care of myself, then I was literally taking away from my audience, from my clients, from the people that I'm serving. So self-care literally put out a block of time on my schedule all week last week where I said it's time time with God, like I've been really spending a lot more time with God and me uh, and the divine lately. So that was magical. Um, and I also started to be open to receiving abundance in all shapes and form. So instead of only looking at my bank account or money as a source of abundance, I knew that I am the source of abundance. Like literally, I am the source of abundance. And I just like really started to see evidence everywhere around me that showed me how abundant that I am. The air that I was breathing in, the water that I get to drink, the food that I get to put into my mouth, the sunlight that is like touching my skin. Like I felt so abundant every moment of the day, regardless of like my bank account. And I think that really completely shifted my state of being from lack to abundance. Um, and then finally, instead of being extremely judgmental with myself and others, I became extremely compassionate and grateful for myself and other people. So, I mean, I'm still not perfect. Like I wouldn't say I'm per perfectly non-judgmental. Like I still, I'm super aware of like ways that I still get to improve every single day. But I definitely catch myself being a lot more compassionate when I catch those thoughts coming up in my mind like, oh my gosh, Miko, you didn't work out, you suck, like that voice. Um, instead of trying to shove it away, trying to judge it even more, judgment, judgments after judgments, like I just really saw myself as this loving, compassionate space to, to embrace all of that as that comes up. Uh, so, so yeah, basically like, if you literally did all of these things, if you resonate with what I used to be and you do the, the, the flip and do everything that I've done in these past couple of days, I can almost guarantee you, your life will be transformed. Like, <laughs> I still cannot believe the, the results I've generated this week. Like, it's literally, I, I feel like the door to abundance has swung wide open and I am just so ready to receive. Like, and if you guys are also into like the masculine and the feminine energy, like this, I was uber masculine, uber like always in the doing, always in the driving, always in the, the, the pushing. But what I did these past couple of days, like I was really just cultivating and practicing the art of receiving. Like, and I am so ready to receive all the abundance, all of the love, all of the joy that the universe has been waiting to bless me with. So yes, let me know guys what landed for you, what was supportive for you in this live video. Um, if you want to talk more, you can always send me a message and I'll be more than happy to connect with you guys one-on-one -on -one, um, because I'm all about generosity and giving. So I let me know guys, pop in the comments below and I gotta go now. Thank you so much for listening and I'm sending so much love from my heart to you. Talk to you soon. Bye.